Hello, I welcome you to all of that United Methodist Church in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and the people here at Olivet. Uh, we have with us today Carolyn Murdoch over on the piano to help us with, with music. And we also have Judy Cox and Cassie Cox here uh, to help with the service. And it's always so nice to have people to look at when I'm looking out in the congregation. We do have a couple of announcements to make. Um, all of that will have its administrative council meeting this coming Wednesday, October the 7th at 630. This is our meeting to finalize the budget and the officers and things for 2021. So if you're a member of the council or an interested party, uh, please plan to attend that meeting. So it, this may be a little longer than our usual business meetings uh, need to be. So keep that in mind as well. Forestville is moving ahead with plans to start in-house church on October the 25th at 11.15. We'll be sending out a letter and a procedure and things in the next week or so uh, about entering and exiting and, and all of the little nuances of trying to get everybody in while keeping them safe. Uh, so when you do receive that letter, please read it carefully and then get in touch with me if you have further questions that are not answered in the documents we send you. Our opening hymn this morning is number 529 in the Methodist hymnal, How Firm a Foundation. And this is an early United States hymn used in the, out in the arbors uh, in the early days of the church. And we're gonna sing the second verse today if Carolyn remembers. Let's sing together. strengthen us and help us. We ask for that strength and that help now. Draw us close to you and to each other through this service today. Guide and direct us to be your obedient children. Amen. I've returned to the Old Testament today and the book of Exodus. Our scripture is the commandments given by God to Moses and the people in the wilderness as they journeyed together. These are the only laws spoken directly to the people by God himself. And they're unique in that they were for the, both the nation of Israel and for each individual person explaining to them how to conduct themselves to be considered righteous by God. I'm reading Exodus 20, verses 1 through 4, 7 through 9, and 12 through 20, the Ten Commandments. And I'm reading today from the, the Common English Bible. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You must have no other gods before me. Do not make an idol for yourself, no form whatsoever of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters under the earth. Do not use the Lord your God's name as if it were had no significance. The Lord won't forgive anyone who uses his name this way. Remember the Sabbath day and treat it as holy. Six days you may work and do all of your tasks. Honor your father and your mother 
so that your life will be long on the fertile land that the Lord your God is giving you. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not testify falsely against your neighbor. Do not desire and try to take your neighbor's house. Do not desire and try to take your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, ox, donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the horn and the mountain smoking, the people shook with fear and stood at a distance. They said to Moses, you speak to us and we'll listen, but don't let God speak to us or we'll die. Moses said to the people, don't be afraid because God has come only to test you and to make sure you always are in awe of God so that you don't sin. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today I'd like to take some time to talk about why we still need to follow these commandments today and why they are still relevant to us today. Some people will tell you that we don't have to keep any of the rules in the Old Testament. After all, Paul and the Jerusalem Council said hundreds of years ago that we don't have to follow the Jewish rules. And that's written clearly for us in the book of Acts. But Paul and the Jerusalem Council were not talking about the Ten Commandments. They were talking about the rules that Moses gave the people in Deuteronomy and Leviticus, as well as the verbal rules passed down by the, the temple priest. You know, those 600 plus rules that set the interpretations of the commandments and other rules written in those books. These 10 commandments were what Jesus called the law, or as the Jews called them, the 10 words because these were the words spoken by God directly to the people. Before Jesus came to show us a way through faith in him to be made righteous, there was little hope for people to truly be seen as righteous in God's eyes. And why was that? Because these ten commands are so hard for us to do and keep doing. And if you broke one, you weren't able to be seen righteous, even if you kept the other nine. And you know how we humans are. If you tell us don't do something, guess what we're going to do nine times out of ten? Yeah, we're going to do that very thing. Those of you who've had children underfoot know this extremely well. We say, don't touch that, that's hot. Don't throw your ball in the house. Don't date that guy. And it goes on and on. We hate being told don't. So I'd like to take these 10 commandments and turn them from negative into positive. Say that we do something instead of we don't do something. I'm going to lump the first and the second ones together as they're talking pretty much about the same thing. God said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You must have no other gods before me. Do not make an idol for yourself, no form whatsoever of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters under the earth. So instead, let's say, I am the Lord your God. I've saved you from sin and death by sending my son. I am sufficient for all that you need. Do worship me and only me. Do love me only. We may not make a statue of an idol as they did in, in the times before. But do we worship things? 
Would you consider them an idol? Money? The newest gadgets? Maybe even an athlete or an actor? I mean, sometimes we even call them an idol, that we idolize them. Some of these things may actually fit into another commandment, that of don't covet. And we'll get into that one a little bit later. But God is the only one who supplies all that we need in this life. We need not worship anything else or anyone else because God is the one who has done it all for us. Do not use the Lord your God's name as if it were of no significance. The Lord won't forgive anyone who uses his name that way. Instead, do be honest in all your dealings with others. Do reserve God's name for worship. Now, this is not just the things we were taught we shouldn't say, like gosh and geez and Jesus, etc., in anger or frustration, but making an oath using God's name as as God is my witness we usually do that with a hand up because if we're lying that's not using God's name correctly it's like committing perjury in court only worse because the judge will be God instead of that person on the bench Remember the Sabbath day and treat it as holy. Six days you may work and do all your tasks. Do take a day off, once a week, to rest and be with God. God says, I enjoy your company. Here's a positive command instead of a negative one. We are to do this. But it is probably the one that trips us up the most. What does it mean to treat Sabbath as holy? It means we take one day out of seven to worship, to study, and just to be with God. It doesn't mean it has to be on Sundays. My Sabbath is on Mondays. I take that day for me to enjoy creation, to study something that I want to read and to relax and renew. It does mean you do not do unnecessary stuff. And this is where the old blue laws came from. And that's why there are people who don't cook on Sundays or even shop. An Orthodox Jew will not even turn on a light switch in their house during Sabbath. They look at all the things they don't do that day and look at how God provides. So the lack of, of light reminds them that it was God who first said, let there be light. People talk about not mowing your yards on Sundays, but Oh, no, I think maybe that's a great way to, to be in creation, to be by yourself with God, and sometimes that's hard to do in a, in a large family, and just to relax. So it depends on your interpretation of what it means to desist, which is what the Hebrew word Shabbat means, and that's where we get the word Sabbath. Honor your father and mother so that your life will be long on the fertile land that the Lord your God has given you. Again, this is a positive command. Do this. Honor your parents. And for some who are abused or just have bad parents, it's hard. It doesn't mean that you never put your family member into a nursing home if that's where they can receive the care that they need. It does mean that while you are under their roof, you abide by their rules. And that as much as possible, you take care of them later in life. 
You don't abandon them. Do not kill. Okay, now we're into the real don'ts. I guess I would change this to do honor life and justice. Work to alleviate poverty and unnecessary illness and injury. Think about the things that Jesus did with his ministry. He healed the sick and he stuck up for the little guy. And we should do the same. Do be in control of your anger so that you don't hurt others physically or emotionally when you're angry. Do not commit adultery. Do honor your marriage vows as long as you are married so you remain faithful to your spouse. Can we commit adultery in our hearts and minds, lusting over someone who is not your life partner? It may also be seen as adultery. That's the way Jesus interpreted it. Do not steal. Be satisfied with what you have. Love others. When you steal, you not only thumb your nose at the person or the company that you steal from, you're also thumbing your nose at God, telling God that he hasn't provided for you as you think he should. Because God is the one who gives us all that we have. Do not testify falsely against your neighbor. Again, be honest in your dealings with people. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not desire and take your neighbor's house. Do not desire and try to take your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, ox, donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. Again, be satisfied with what you have and use it wisely. Honor God in all of your dealings and always love. There you have it. Jesus gave us one commandment, though, that covers the whole ten. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Do you see how following that law of love will help you to meet all the Ten Commandments? This is what God requires. And it is much harder than just saying, don't do this or don't do that. We have to have a change of heart to love others and to love God. But it all starts with loving God. You cannot truly love anyone, not even yourself, until you learn to love God fully. Ask God how you can love him more, more than the things in your life. Ask him how you can honor him better. Ask him how you sh to show you how to love. Amen. Several prayer requests this morning. Please continue to pray for Rick Curtis as he continues out of work due to side effects from the COVID virus. Doc Curtis is recovering from COVID and, and doing okay, especially for someone of her age. Julia Davidson and her family are in quarantine after her son and his girlfriend have become ill with the virus. And now we find that our president and several others in Washington have become positive and symptomatic. Please pray for all these and do wear a mask when you are out in public. Keep yourself and your family safe from this very dangerous disease. Be in prayer for the folks at Forestville as we begin in-house church later this month. And we are thankful that Jane Curtis has recovered from the virus and that Sarah Liza B is out of quarantine and continued negative the whole time. 
that she was exposed at work. Be with the family of Robert Howell as he passed away this week. And continue to pray for them as they grieve. And always, always be in prayer for our country as we look at elections in a little over a month. Please pray for God's guidance before you vote, that those who are elected will work for the best interest of the country, not for some special interest groups. Let us pray. Loving and patient God, you have shown us through Jesus' example how we should love. Thank you for your patience with us and for finding a way that we could truly fulfill the law through faith in Christ. Draw us ever closer to you and help us each day to do those things that please you so we may truly know the joy of your presence. We ask you to be with these who have been mentioned this morning. We ask for healing for those with the virus and Strength for those who are working on treatments and vaccines to alleviate it. And we thank you for those who have recovered from it without serious after effects. We ask you to be with the family of Robert Howell as he is laid to rest, continue to strengthen and, and give courage and comfort to his family. Help us to be vigilant in keeping ourselves and our loved ones safe. Help us to follow the do's of the recommendations by our, our governor and medical experts. And remind us to wear a mask and to social distance as we should. Please be with us as we work to return to regular worship inside our church walls. But also make us ever mindful of those who will not feel comfortable doing so for a while and to make sure they stay connected with us and our church community through video or phone services and holy one we ask your help as our country works to hold elections even during these unprecedented times we as as ask for your guidance for us as we prepare to vote help us to choose the persons that are best equipped for the job, and that will work for what is right for our country and for the world. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our final hymn is number 398 in the Methodist hymnal, Jesus Calls Us for the Tumult. Words by Cecil Alexander and music by William Judd. We'll sing the first and third verses to it this morning. you'll get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Now go with God, following the commandments by doing God's will, always loving God and loving others. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>